Today we're going to be looking at night photography. Photographing on the streets at night is a wonderful way to make dramatic, stylish and atmospheric images. And one of the benefits of photographing at night is that we don't have to worry too much about the quality of light, because the street lights, neon signs and car headlamps are always shining. Neither do we have to worry too much about the weather, and if it's raining, just think of all those wonderfully reflective surfaces we've got to work with. In this video, I'll be giving you some tips and tricks to help you get the pictures you want while you're out photographing at night. And to illustrate my points, I'll be using pictures from some of my projects, including my series of night pictures called Dark Hours, which were taken over the course of two winters on the streets of London. We'll also be looking at some of the photographers who have produced the most inspiring night pictures, including that of the great master Brassai. Let's get started. <laughs> Cities become different places after dark. The lights and signs illuminate areas that are often in shadow during the day and they mark out new spaces. What might seem a bland, concreted area during the day may look like a scene from film noir after dark. Eerily lit streets, dark corners brought fleetingly to life by a car's headlamps. Window lights reflecting in a pool of water, there is much to inspire and with shadowy figures moving in and out of the light, the atmosphere couldn't be better. One thing I've always liked about photographing on the streets at night is that it's easy to keep a low profile. If you're anything like me and rather self-conscious about street photography, then the night hours allow you to hide in the shadows. The main thing to remember is to try to work in areas that offer good main light sources. This will make it much easier to isolate your principal subject and any additional lighting coming from shop windows or passing traffic will add to the mood and create a little decoration if required. Often, the best night pictures are those that infer rather than inform. What may be out of sight or lurking in the shadows will help to give a sense of mystery. One thing to remember is that the amount of detail you capture is likely to be a lot less than when you're shooting during daylight, and human figures will often appear as silhouettes. Therefore, it's important to try to represent them as animatedly as you can, so that they don't just become a featureless blur. A person walking will look much better if caught in full stride. If they are standing still, they will benefit from being under a strong light or some form of illumination to make them recognisable. Look for people who are wearing interesting clothing, perhaps such as hats or long coats. In this picture, I saw this guy hurrying along and noticed his coat was flapping in the wind. I thought there might be some interesting shapes about to be created. Sometimes you just get lucky. These two guys were running down the steps ahead of me and I noticed how their heads mirrored the shape of the concrete balls. It's still possible to use elements such as road markings at night. Indeed, they can be great for punctuating the darkness. With the deeper shadows dominating, their presence can add a strong, hand-drawn or graphic look. If you want to try for some candid portraits, places such as bus and train stations are perfect. They are usually well lit and they often have waiting passengers. I noticed this couple who appeared to be saying goodbye to each other outside King's Cross train station. I didn't want to impose, but I had to get the picture. When starting photography as a teenager, I realised that having a day job wasn't really conducive to wandering the streets with my camera. By the time I finished work, there was precious little daylight left. On a visit to my local library, I came across the work of the great Hungarian photographer Brassai. The library had one well-thumbed copy of his seminal work, Paris by Night. This was to be my study matter for many years to come. His pictures of Paris give a fascinating glimpse of the city and its many characters during the years between the First and Second World Wars. You get a real sense of the place and the people who inhabited the dimly lit bars and smoky nightclubs. The book immediately triggered my imagination and led to my spending many hours after dark roaming the streets of the small town where I lived trying to recreate Brassai's pictures. Little hope of doing that in my small provincial town, but it did make me realise that street photography continue right around the clock. I'll be featuring more of Brassai's work in future videos, because there's much we can learn from this master photographer. In the meantime, there are a number of books available on his work. My personal favourite is Brassai Paris, which is published by Taschen. 
Other photographers whose work has influenced me for low light and nighttime include Bruce Davidson and his intoxicating series of pictures taken on the New York subway during the 1980s, and Bill Brandt for his photographs of London at night taken in the 1930s. I also love the work of Japanese photographer Daido Moriyama. His pictures highlight the urban sprawl of modern day Tokyo and Japan. His characters are photographed against the gritty, dimly lit backdrop of its streets. All human activity is portrayed in a beautiful grainy black and white. There are many opportunities for great pictures at night, and once you've found your scene, it's just a matter of waiting for your lead actor to walk onto the stage. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you wish to keep up with future videos. See you next time. To see more of my work, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelle.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, available at Amazon.